Welcome to Fitz Dog Radio. Merry Christmas to you. Happy Hanukkah. Or as my friend Anthony Clark used to say, uh, or if you're an atheist, brr, sure is cold out there. Uh, welcome to the show. This is uh, coming out, I guess, Christmas Eve, maybe? Christmas Day. Today's the 18th. Oh, no. It's coming out on, I think, Christmas Day. Anyway, so we're getting it done early so that Midcoast Media can have a nice little vacation. Uh, my guest today, Brad Williams, is truly one of my favorite guests on the show. He's just so fucking smart and funny and uh, comes comes to a podcast ready to play, ready to give you something. That's all I ask. Some people, it's like, did you want it? Did you not want to be here? Is your publicist got a gun to your head? What's going on? So anyway, um, we're getting ready for the holiday. We got uh, nine people in the house right now. My uh, in-laws, John and Pat, who flew in from South Africa, they are my my uh, my sister's brother and and his wife, who I fucking adore. The whole family, I adore. They're just the best people. Super smart, very educated, but also like very outdoorsy, very tough, very capable. Um, real South Africans. Um, the sister in law is from South Africa, so they basically moved the kids there when they were. They lived in New York City until they were. The kids were probably. I don't know, six and nine or something, maybe a little older. Um, and her brother's a, a shooter. He's a videographer, you know, a cameraman, DP on projects, shoots in nature. He like He's got one of these hummers that goes into the jungle. He shot the first hippopotamus birth live in nature that had ever been recorded before, like goes into the Amazon for three weeks. Fucking tough guy. And uh, and he shoots narrative films also. He's won some awards. And then his wife, Pat, is in development. She develops TV and film in, in South Africa. So we've been out to visit them a couple couple times. Going back out this Christmas where uh, just between us, it's a secret. But Liam, who is uh, our nephew, is going to propose to his beautiful uh, girlfriend. And so we're going to fly out for that, for the wedding. Assuming she says yes, we don't know that she's saying yes, but they live together. So we're assuming. Um, and then the, his brother Rowan, we, I've talked about him on the podcast before because he, he stayed with us a lot, uh, last year. He's a guy who played rugby in South Africa, got arrested, big, tough dude. And he, uh, <laughs> He decided he wanted to be a Navy SEAL. So to do that, he had to renounce his South Africa. He had dual citizenship in the U.S. and South Africa. But to join the SEALs, he had to renounce his South African citizenship. So he does it, goes out for the SEALs, uh, makes it through six, eight months of training. And then in the final cut during Hell Week, he missed an, he missed an open ocean swim by like four seconds and got cut. And so, but he had to do his four years in the Navy because he tried out for the SEAL. So they, they, they lock you in. And now he's at Columbia University in New York on the GI Bill. So he goes to school for free. The government pays him like four grand a month to go to school. And uh, so he's coming out. Um, we got, I usually spend Christmas back in New York with my family, all my cousins. I'm very lucky. Like my side of the family, love the relatives, love my wife's side. We're very fortunate. And uh, most of them live in New York. Uh, Aaron's mom is flying out. She has a, she has a nine o'clock flight. So she'll be waking up at four and then leaving for the airport around 530 and then she will sit in the airport for three hours because she gets nervous. <laughs> um, I usually spend it in New York with my family, and my mom's apartment has this like kind of community room with a kitchen and a dining room and a pool table in the basement. And so everybody comes out. We get like 50 people, all the cousins. 
and the nieces and nephews, and this phenomenal amount of drinking. There is, uh, uh, you you know that the party's over. One of my cousin's uh, husbands begins grabbing everybody's balls, and that's when we all go, all right, it's time, time to wrap it up. He's had, he's had 27 beers. Uh, the food is bland. There's plenty of it, but it's all white. It's like, you know, cauliflower and mashed potatoes and white turkey and macaroni and cheese. Like everything is white and somewhat flavorless. <laughs> Although we, we, we've interjected, it's gotten better. It, his food has gotten better in the last five or 10 years. Um, and then I was thinking about my childhood Christmases. We used to go down to the Bronx and we would go to my grandfather's house that my mom grew up in and we would have all my cousins come down from Long Island and Westchester. And it was just, I have these like very visceral memories of his house, uh, my grandfather's house. It was uh, one, two, it was three stories, four stories, because it was an attic. But each floor was maybe 15 by 20. I don't know. I'm, I'm making up numbers, but small small stuff like these were little houses with little backyards and we would go down to the basement all the kids would be relegated to the basement and we would go down there and we would um uh he he had like he had tools he worked for the electric company and he had these tools and he would have like uh Liam and he uh my my nephew wants to come in uh and he would have these tools and he would have like all his screws and bolts in mason jars and the lids would be screwed into the underside of the shelf and everything smelled like ginger ale and whiskey the whole house and then turnips boiling turnips those were the smells i could remember and my grandfather would at at dinner would recite irish lyrics he he grew up in ireland he came over when he was i think he was about 16 when he came over and he would recite all these Irish limericks, and all my my mom and her sisters would do them with him, and uh, it was pretty special. It was pretty it was pretty amazing. And I remember one year, my cousin Danny Mulligan, uh, he tried to hang with us, like the older cousins. We were like fourteen, fifteen, and we were drinking. We would we would grab half drank drinks in the kitchen, and we'd grab a bottle of whiskey, and we'd go to the basement, and we we drank. And Danny was younger than us. Like he was probably he was only like twelve. 11 or 12, and he would drink whiskey. And then one year he got so drunk, he went into the bedroom where all the coats were on the bed and he vomited all over the coats. Merry Christmas, everybody. (laughs) And this is back in the day when my mom had a fur coat. My aunt had a fur coat. Try try getting vomit, an 11-year-old vomit out of that fur. So, um... Yeah, that's it. We got New Year's Eve coming up. I will be in Milwaukee at the Improv, December 29th through the 31st. Den Theater in Chicago, January 13th. Atlanta Punchline, January 18th through 20. Then in February in Portland, in March in La Jolla, in April in Tampa. Go to fitzdog.com, get your tickets, come out, see some live comedy. Also, if you're going to go see other live events, the best way to do it, I believe, and I really believe this, Game Time has changed the game. It's an app that allows you to get last-minute tickets without stress. How many times have you gone to a concert? We went to see, uh, well, like we're going to see the Rolling Stones now. And the prices fluctuate, and you keep an eye on it in game time. It, it shows you your local concerts, theater events, uh, sporting events, and you can watch the tickets go up and down, and bam, you jump in, and you can get amazing deals. Uh, the Rolling Stones right now is going for, let me see on my phone, $88. It was 170 a couple weeks ago. I saw it go down to 50 so uh, they've got all these uh, flash deals and zone deals, and you can buy your tickets uh, by looking at the seats. You can see the view from the seat on the app, which is pretty sweet. they got a lowest price guarantee, event cast- cancellation protection. They've got it all. So uh, get involved with game time and, uh, and, and, and see what you want to see. And it's a new year, you know, seeing live things is so much more enjoyable than a physical gift. Give, give somebody some tickets 
for the holidays this year. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code FITSDOG for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code F-I-T-Z-D-O-G for $20 off. Download GameTime today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Also, listen, uh, it's it, it's the holiday season. There's a lot of th- things about gift giving and do you exchange gifts? Vac- do you go on vacations? Are you giving donations? There's all this pressure, all these decisions you got to make. And, and really what you should be doing is just focusing on you've got your family. They're not all going to be around forever. They get older. They move. Uh, enjoy that time. Be in the moment. And uh, I, uh, BetterHelp is the way to help you do that. It's online therapy that is cheaper than in-person therapy, way more convenient because you don't have to get in your car, sit in traffic, find a parking spot. You just open up your laptop and boom, you're in the room with a licensed therapist who has been matched to you. You fill out a questionnaire And they look at what issues you're dealing with, and they find therapists that specialize in that. If you don't like the therapist, boom, you switch. No harm, no foul. Uh, I got hooked up with somebody amazing, and uh, we talked about cognitive behavioral therapy. I worked through some thought patterns I was locked in that I'm since, uh, I still struggle with, but I've I've released from them. Uh, My life is better. Your life will be better. With therapy, I don't care who you are. Everybody's got a, a, an issue they could benefit from therapy. So give it a shot. Uh, BetterHelp is the best way to do it. And uh, in the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash FitzDog today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Fitzdog. Okay, let's get into it. My guest today, you saw him on David Tell's Comedy Underground, live at Gotham, The Tonight Show, Jimmy Kimmel Live, Mind Dementia. He's had his like fourth special has just came out, um, and uh, it's called it's called About Last Night. He's got a clip from Ari Shafir's This Is Not Happening that's got like nine million views. Um, he, he's amazing. I really enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. Uh, happy holidays to you. Uh, love to your families. Thank you for listening. And here is the great Brad Williams. All right, so we're sitting in the brand new, I think this is called the Green, Green something studios. Green dog. What is it, Paul? (laughs) Green lab. It's called the Green Lab. The Green Lab. The Green Lab. And we're kicking off the inaugural podcast with one of my, literally, Brad, I'm not, I'm not just saying this. You are truly one of my favorite podcast guests. Oh, that's very nice of you. No, no pressure, everyone. This is going to be a top (laughs) fiver of the year. We're coming in at the end of the year. End of the year. Top top fiver right here. Well, that's why you put out the Oscar pictures at the end of the year. You want them to be considered. Now you understand why I'm releasing my special on December 21st. That's right. Well, you didn't waste any time getting your plugs, did you? let's go this guy knows how to fucking run yes uh promo but, but that that that's why i'm releasing my special starfish on uh december 21st on veeps uh what's veeps you say uh it's not a streaming profile that uh, another streaming service that you have to uh subscribe to uh you you but they have a lot of concerts there they have a lot of comedy specials there didn't bob and, dylan uh, do something with them yeah yeah he streamed a concert on there so yeah. you can go and you could get a membership to veeps and you could uh, get all the watch concerts and comedy specials, or you can pick and choose and buy them a la carte. So yours a la carte, I think is 15 bucks. Yeah. But then you own it for life. Yeah. And then you own it. And then I, I think the and, best part and then is I own it and I own your money. There so we that, go. There you go. Here's the best part is that we're supporting live nation because they are having hard times. Very and hard it's times. It's good to put some money in their pocket. Very hard times. Live nation. I'm, 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 I'm doing my best to help them out. Yeah. We were talking about charity work before the mics went live. Right. And, uh, and you uh, help veterans that come back to this country Yes. and a multinational corporation that yes. is stripping away all the uh, creativity. Yes. From the entertainment world. Yes. And I'm touring 
through Live Nation <laughs> in this next year, doing a lot of their venues. And uh, I'm just trying. I'll, I'm just trying to feed the kids. You're right. I'm just Look, trying to feed hey, the kids of if millionaires. If Live Nation offered me a tour and a special, I would jump all over it. But until <laughs> they do, I will just marvel at how they, they they call it vertical integration, which is when you own from the from the manufacturing to the distribution. Yes. They they own all the venues. They own everything. They I, own all the radio stations that you need to promote your shows at the venues. Yes. They manage the, the bands. Yeah. They own the ticket company that sells the tickets. Ticketmaster. Yeah, they own that. And uh and then I think I, I, I think now that I do a special with them, they own my child. I, I, I think I have to change my daughter's name to Live Nation. <laughs> it's like, what was that station casino or something that was like <laughs> offering like, oh, we'll pay you twenty five grand or whatever to name yeah. your kid Station Casino right, or something right. like that, and then somebody did it. And of I'm just course like, they did. I'm like, I never want to be. I, I, I will happily go on OnlyFans and and and, and suck all the dicks before I name my kid Station Casino. How for much money grand. would it take? And think hard about this. How much money would it take for you, Brad Williams? Okay. To perform oral sex on a man to completion, not Ooh. in your mouth. Okay. So I don't have to swallow. Uh, that, that 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 does factor in. It does factor. Um, in. That I, takes a zero off the end. Yeah, I think this is a conversation that a lot of men have, and some people go the route like no amount of money. Right. I'm like liar. You liar. Lie. Yes. Er, I have a friend. He's my college roommate. We had this conversation one time, and I go, "How much money?" Now we went all the way to gay sex. You're a power bottom, and. Uh, he said nine hundred and ninety nine billion dollars. Oh, and I looked at him and went, Jesus. no, yeah. you're lying yeah. to me. So if someone has nine hundred and ninety eight right. billion dollars on the table. Yeah. You have two kids. Right. You 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 say no. OK, so I'm I'm a realist. Yeah, I look at. Well, if I'm going to do that, it'll be for amount of money where I can go. You know what? I'm good now. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm not buying a helicopter, but, you know, the house is paid off. College is paid for. I essentially don't have to work. I just have to, like, just do fun. You're games. saying that's how you are right now or no, that's where you want to be? That's where I want to okay. be. OK, so I'm going I'm I'm going five million, but I'm willing to negotiate. <laughs> five million sounds like a fair number. Five million takes care of college house. Yeah. Everything. And, and then and then go on a couple of vacations, a couple of vacations. I tell the wife, hey, I've got to go to Thailand and get the taste of dick out of my mouth. And I have a nice little vacation there. Yes. And uh, do all the things that you do in Thailand. Sure. So <laughs> by the way, <laughs> funny thing, I mentioned Thailand. I got a haircut yesterday in, Let me in, see. in, in this new. Uh, oh, fancy. Very fancy. Very. Uh, you look like. Uh, I, 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 I feel like I need a tiki torch and I'm going to be outside of a church in Charleston with this haircut. Well, you look like Jason Isbell. Uh, is, you know is, that, is that who does that? He's a country singer. <laughs> oh, OK. No, no, he's a great country singer. Yeah. So I'm at um, and I've never been to this barber before and, and she's Thai. And uh, we start talking about I'm going the food route. Yeah. I'm going like, oh, Thailand, the food. the Oh, my God. And. and you know, the Tom Yum Gum soup and something like and we're, we're just going about that. And then she does the pivot where she goes and then the lady boys. And I'm like, I don't know no. if I'm allowed. She said that. Yeah. She goes and the lady boys like wow. like they're boys, but they're not boys. Yeah. They're very pretty, very yeah, pretty. Yeah, I'm just yeah. like, I don't know how to answer this. There's other dudes. It's one of those dude centric barbershops with sports on the TV uh -huh. and everything. So it's all dudes in there. Yeah. And I just I, I, I just feel them all turn around and look uh -huh. at me. They're like, how? Like, uh. Neil Brennan does this great bit called How Liberal Are You? Yeah. And that was playing in my head. Like, how liberal are you? Like, <laughs> oh, no. She just brought up lady boys. I have to be incredibly progressive. But then at the same time, show that I'm not interested. But if I was interested, that's okay. You'd, it's okay to well, be interested. <laughs> you'd, I'm going to open this door. Put the in here. Cause you, okay. I, I, I thought you were going to open the door because you're like, in behind door number one, we have a lady boy. <laughs> <laughs> No, I have uh, I've explored the lady boys online a little bit because I was curious. Yeah. And you know what? They are they're gorgeous. <laughs> and they and they they bury the lead on the penis. Yeah. You don't know about the penis until the top has come off. Mm -hmm. There's been a little uh there's been some stimulation. Sure. And then and they point, drop the hammer. At that point. At that point, 
at that point, it's not five million. No, it's one hundred and fifty bucks, <laughs> and you're paying it. <laughs> yes. At that, at that point, I'm like, well, I'm already here. I've already done some gay stuff. Right. It's fine. Right. It's uh, it, you know that and like, uh that and I would love to to do it for five million. I'm I'm hoping some billionaire is listening to this and 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 and, th- and they'll offer yeah maybe someone that just has a, a a few million over five million goes you know what i like that on my bucket list right fine yeah i'll do it because then every time my daughter would complain about anything ever it's the same way our parents had the oh walk uphill both ways you know nine miles yeah, in the through snow. the cemetery you're like i had to take a shot in the <laughs> mouth <laughs> I had to stroke a long, veiny right, cock, right. and then of course my wife is will be shrugging like I would, you know, I I did that, yeah, <laughs> like, no big deal, yeah. And after a while, you wouldn't even have to explain it to your daughter. You just you just mime <laughs> sucking one, and that would be it. And then she would turn to her friends and be like, "Here he goes with the dick sucking story again." <laughs> Ugh. And they what's, would all, they would all roll their eyes. What's the closest you ever got? Because I went into the woods once. I was curious about. Gay sex. Okay. And Ooh, so, this, is a, this is a fun game. Yeah. I, I like this game. So I was, and I was into it not on a physical level because it was mm-hmm. not attracted to men. Okay. I mean, you're not hard on the eyes, but you get it. I get it. I was interested because I was reading uh, Allen Ginsberg. I was reading Walt Whitman. There was a lot of, I was I an English that, major. I, I love that you're taking this to an intellectual level. It was a totally intellectual exploration. I'm willing to take a hard dick in my mouth, but purely for the intellectual stimuli. Spiritual, too. Yes. It was spiritual. It's they, like doing ayahuasca. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You go into the woods like ayahuasca. <laughs> you puke afterwards. You puke afterwards. But there's, um, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, so, so anyway, so I get into that. David Bowie. I'm into David Bowie. I'm okay. into uh, Iggy Pop. And okay. they've, all ex- they've all explored. Yeah. So I'm drunk one night. I think it's my junior year of college, and my apartment is across the street from some woods. And in, in the, you know, the Fenway in Boston. Yeah. Not Fenway Park. Oh. There's a woods behind Fenway Park. A oh. small wooded area. Every city has a small wooded area that okay. was grown and perpetuated for anonymous gay sex. <laughs> the Brambles in Central Park. <laughs> In L.A., you've got basically the whole Hollywood Hills. The whole Hollywood Hills. The whole thing. <laughs> Every house is just a, is just a producer in a very lavish coat. Right. And a chair that, do, that that shouldn't exist. Yes. And it's open. It's and open. He, and, and he's open. The garage is there. Yes. There's handcuffs. Sure. So I uh, am drunk, and I, I walk right into the woods. Mm. And I look around. Yeah. And it's it's the fall. Okay. Leaves are crunching under my feet. There's sure. shadows flittering through the trees. Fall in Boston. Beautiful. Crisp. Great time. Patriots had lost that day. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, this guy just pops up behind a tree. Like like the magical gay like, elf. Like, like I'm the guy. Like a wooden nymph. <laughs> yes, he was a like wooden a, nymph. Like, like, like a wooden <laughs> rock hard nymph. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure, you know, you know, because you know, they have bears and they have otters. He yeah. was a nymph. He was a nymph. He had the felt triangular hat yep. Yep. and little he booties. Pan flute. Yeah, the pan <laughs> flute, but his pan flute was between his legs. And he looked at me and I looked at him and then he walks up to me and I'm like, I don't like, I don't know how this works. <laughs> so he unzips his fly. Okay. And pulls out his, pulls out his cock. I'm getting hard right now. This is great. <laughs> and I'm looking at it like, all right, what do I do now? And then he reaches in and he pulls out his balls. And okay. now you got a picture. He never undid his button at the top of his fly. Oh. So now he's got balls and cock yeah. pushed out yeah. of the fly. And I just look at it and I start laughing and I go, no, like I'm not interested at all. See, he went too far. And I just. Icarus flew too, too close to the sun. Too close to the sun is when, when he's got burned. When he. Pulled out the balls. Yeah, that that was him going. I could fly a little bit higher. That's right. If, if you if you just left it at shaft, it would have been probably been a done deal. Probably would have been a done deal. But once the balls get out, you're yeah. like, oh, now it's real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the balls are the balls are like as much as the dick is not aesthetically pleasing. The balls are just no no one's had a a a, a even a cute pair of balls. No, it's not. No, when not, you're not as when a you're one. No. When you're one, you have cute, cute balls. balls. Yeah, because they haven't it. descended yet. Yes. It's just the sack. So they're up there. Yeah. You know. It's... So 
Yeah. So I go, so I look at him and I just go, no. And then I get panicked because now I'm alone in the woods with a guy whose penis is out. Sure. So I push him <laughs> and he falls and then, down. And then you commit a hate crime. I no. <laughs> commit a hate crime and he jumps up and he just runs back into the woods. And I, I stumble out like, well, I'm not gay. All right. That was it. That settles that. Uh, uh, so wow. that's my story. That's your story. Brad so, Williams. My story, the closest I ever got was. Uh, I, I was involved in a, uh, devil's three way. Oh, see the, the, uh, three -way the three Brett way. Kavanaugh three way. Yeah. <laughs> see, yeah. With Spee and all yeah. the yeah, <laughs> friends, Spee. <laughs> I love it. That's a, that, that, that's a good reference. Yeah. If you remember the testimony. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 I was, I was involved in a devil's three way, which for those who are, are unfamiliar is, uh, two men. Two, two men gentlemen. and and two gentlemen, yeah. as as we called ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, and a very uh, uh, rambunctious and uh, uh, a very worthy lady. Sure. Yeah, and and a damsel. Yeah, and, and a, a a lady in yeah. every sense of the word. Uh huh. Uh, and uh, long story about how we got to the point of the devil's three way, but yeah, we're, but we're there. You got there, and what? And once you're there, you're like. I, all right, I'm doing this thing. Yeah. And you know, and 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 don't and don't get me wrong. There's there there's times where I'm like look looking down and going, this is great. And then I look up and see a dude and go, yeah. not so great anymore. <laughs> let, let me look back down. Oh, right. there you go. That's I good. Just focus. Yeah, just focus yeah. on that. Um, and at some point, because the most common, you know, position. In the Devil's Three Way, you got to do a little. It's called the London Bridge. I, 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 I always joke that when I did it, because of the height discrepancy, it was a Leaning Tower of Pisa. <laughs> uh, he's, he, he, he's up. He's yeah. You, you Wait, guys so get she's it. on all fours. Yeah, she's on all You're fours. You're behind her. I'm behind her. He's in front or in of her. front. Yeah, I don't remember. Okay, I've got, I've got an opening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, and I'm doing my best with it. Take the shot. Yeah, take, take the, the shot. shot. And he's got his. And then, and then there comes a point where uh, the lady. Uh, uh, says like now I want you guys to, to switch. You know I want to have the other guy over here and okay. the other guy in the back there. Musical chairs. Yeah, and so we switch, but we did not talk about this. We we there was no coach with the whiteboard saying okay arrow you go here you clockwise go here. always yes. go clockwise in a devil's three way. See I, I and you know what my grandma never told me that. Yeah, and I blame her. Yeah. Um. So she was all about soup, but not soup, the important not stuff. The important shit. See, they didn't teach that in high school. Yeah. So we go the same direction. And the guys, the guy has, because of the height discrepancy, once again, average size man, <laughs> it's right in front of my face. <laughs> Greg, it's right there. I've never been that close to a dick that was not my That was aroused. That was aroused. Rock hard. Yeah. Bam. Right in front of my face. And there was a moment. There was a moment where in my head I could just go, you're already here. <laughs> <laughs> in for a pound, in for a penny. Why not? <laughs> Do it. Say you did it. Joke about it later with yeah, your friends. Yeah. Say you you get to be the guy like that when that when you go like, well, what are your thoughts? You, you like, okay, you, you know how there's always the the white guy that gets caught saying something uh not great about the black community and he, guilty. And <laughs> from Boston, no idea. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. Uh, and then his, his, his excuse is always, "I, I, I have a black friend. Yeah, I know many black people. Yeah. I hang out in black neighborhoods. Yeah. You know, that's all. That's always the go-to. I love soul music, hip hop. Yeah. I want to be the guy that if I ever got caught doing something that was not looked, uh, was not smiled upon by the gay community. You know, I have a misstep uh, in some way, shape, or form." I, I can go back like, hey, I am an ally. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I yeah have, I'm sorry, but. I've, par I, I've, I've partaken. There, I am one of you. There's a chunk missing to this story. Okay. You meet up with the guy. Yeah. What happens? What? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What happened? There, 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 there was a girl there, Greg. Yeah. Okay, so what what do you, what do you mean? The, did the, you the... touch tips? Was there. No. Uh, oh, he did. During and this is a bit my act, so I apologize for. But I'm t I'm telling the story version, not the joke. Version. Okay. But there was a point during the uh during the rotation. Yeah. And and we went the same way. 
that he did um this is very real uh uh that he did paint brush me so What's he kind of he kind of you know the scene from lion king where where rafiki takes the red dust and <laughs> goes across the forehead and goes simba uh that that essentially happened that essentially you were marked you were branded yes i was branded there may have there may have been some pc <laughs> there may have been some remnants on my forehead and the thing is is like now you're in this thing of like okay this this thing has happened yeah do you just tap out and rush to the bathroom uh-huh. and wash your face because there's a lady there who's being very generous with her time you're in the heat of battle yeah there's no timeouts there's no timeouts yeah so you just kind of go you, you, you just kind of like make a bookmark in your head like okay remember to wash your head tonight right remember to wash your face right and uh yeah so uh uh, uh I, I i just continued the engagement yeah which was delightful yeah other than that little hiccup and uh yeah so that's the closest i got and i haven't really thought about it until this podcast but there's a part but there's a part of me that goes ah, i should have just gone for it yeah i should have just gone for it. Yeah. how yeah. how would my life have changed right no. And now we're too old. Now if you, you know, old. if you're 19 and yeah. you experiment, it's sort of That's like fine. bohemian. Yeah. It's free. But at 57, now uh. all of a sudden it's like that show. Uh, uh, what's the one where the, the old guy transitions? Oh, transparent. Transparent. All of a sudden you're transparent. You're that yeah. guy. You're, it's kind of like. Who uh, like nobody wants to hear about me having sex with my own wife. Never mind no, with another guy. At this let point. alone doing some of that. And uh, and you know, like when you're 19, you're still a spring chicken. Yeah, everything works. Yep. Like uh, like I I don't know how like you said you're 57. You yeah. Said, yeah. Like I'm 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 40. And now when I when I get an erection with my wife, I go, all right, honey, we're on a clock. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> Right. There's no dilly dallying. We right. have to make a, efficient use of this time. Let's use it. I have this is a gift. Yes. I I I haven't gotten to the point yet. Uh, I'm sure you have a sponsorship with a company. I do. But uh, I've got a I've got a bedside table stuffed with blue chews. Blue chews. Okay. Yeah. Good. I want to use the right thing now. If blue chew wants to reach out to me and send me like a little starter pack. Dude, I'm at, next time I come to the store, I will have some in my trunk and I will give them to you. Awesome. Yeah, they I are amazing. Yeah, I talked to a friend about it. He's he, he's 44. Yeah. And uh, he uses them and he's in a similar situation as me as like, hey, everything works. Right. It's fine, but you know, we're on it we're on a timer. Right. <laughs> like it's right. You know, you like set that kitchen timer and be like, okay, we got to we there used go. to be no timer. There used to be no timer. You then, know what my number was? What's that? Fifty minutes. That was that was how long 50. my my average sessions were. Wow. Fifty. Can you imagine doing that now? I. <laughs> she wouldn't want it. <laughs> she would be. I feel bad for her. My yes. wife is currently having sex with a fifty-seven year old man. Do you think that was in her plans? No. When she was younger. No. Do you think she's not revulsed by that? No. Like think about yeah, and I, I'm I'm not gonna ask how old your wife is, but same age. All right, so then go back and go back to your twenty-something year old Greg Fitz dog, yeah, and look at him. And be like, hey, one day you're 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 gonna be begging to have sex with a fifty-seven-year-old <laughs> woman, and she's gonna say no, and she's gonna say no, and you'll be like, why not? <laughs> Because you will also be 57. That's, right. That's the caveat. That's right. So you now, guys are we, both. When we have sex now, it used to be, oh, all over the apartment. Yeah. Now it's like, if it's during the day, close the curtains, turn off the <laughs> lights, put on put on a sleep mask. Yes. Yeah. That's fine. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the blackout curtains for sleep and for day and for daytime loving. There's yeah. no details involved in this. It exchange. just changes. And 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 but I will say this, and, and so yes, to your your good people at Blue Chew, send me a little uh, send me a little starter pack. It's like a little thing that lets me go, you know, let me go to the CVS or the Walgreens and make sure my blood pressure is all right. Yeah, it know. does jack up your blood pressure. When I take it, yeah, I get very lightheaded for a couple hours, so I try okay. not to take the full pill. Yeah, so you, yeah, so it's like me with a gummy. You 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 right. cut it in half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all you need. Yeah, just a little boost. That's right, it. Right. 
See, it seems like you're in the same boat as me. Everything works, but just everything ta- works. Time limit. Yeah. So we got to get a little like you know just and not that not that we want to be doing like we said for 50 minutes. No. We just don't want it to come around to minute eight, and you're like, ah, yeah, darn it. Yep. I was doing. I was going good. Yeah. And know? then you got to look at her and go. It's not you. It's not you. And she's like, I didn't think it was me. I mean, you're the one. <laughs> you're the one with the limp dick. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with this me. vagina. I, I know. I know what I was doing. Yeah, it was working. Right. And you're like, yeah, it was. But then, yeah. you know, well, it's got to be tough now. Command. Your your kid is what? Almost two? Four. No. I know. I know. Holy shit! No, I, I feel like she was just born, and now she's four. Well, four is when it starts coming back. The sex. Right. Yeah, because now it's like you don't have to have the baby monitor on. Yeah, you don't got to be like, like, like on death on watch, top of it at all right. times. You know, so yeah, like now it's it's fun. she's not waking up in the middle of the night anymore. Uh huh. Like it's good. Yeah. Yeah. The old yeah. So it start it's starting to come back, and that's great. So I want to make I want to make sure my wife stays with me. Yeah. So uh got to get a little blue chew in the Pez dispenser. Yes, right. Now, is that for, for you? Look at this extended ad we're doing extended. I know. Hey. Actually, they're not currently. They've been a they've been a sponsor. I okay. need them back. So, like, what, you pop, now, do you have to do it, like, that morning and be like, hopefully no, it happens 20 minutes. that night? 20 minutes? 20 minutes, and it lasts for 24 hours, apparently. Wow. That's great. Yeah, yeah. 20 minutes. I feel like most of us know, if, especially if it's going to happen that night. Yeah. We're... we're we're aware. Yeah. You know. Also, when I do what I'll do is I'll decide mm-hmm. like, yeah, look, both kids are out. Yep. Um, it's been a while. Mm-hmm. And so I'll chew it and then I'll walk into the TV room and I'll just stick my tongue out and it's all blue and, oh. she, and it's on. She knows so there's she 20 knows. minutes. There's 20 minutes. <laughs> That's your signal. Did yes. you come in with your Smurf tongue and go, honey, look what I did. Bam. And and that and, and and then hopefully her reaction is okay, good, and not yeah. <sighs> oh, okay. Dude, I'm... she made that noise one night, and I threw it in her face. <laughs> I, I I was like, "You want to fall?" And she went, Ugh. "I go what?" I, and I th- that was a fifteen minute discussion that she should never like. There's so many ways to say no. Yes, as a woman, because yes. let's be honest. Like and... I don't know what what percentage of the time do you initiate versus your wife? Oh. All <laughs> like, 99, just about 99%. Yeah. Isn't that fucking crazy? Yeah. They complain about the patriarchy, throw a move once in a while, even it up. We'll respond. Yes, we will. We will absolutely. There, there, I, I can hardly think of a scenario where my wife would look at me and be like, Hey, tonight it's happening. And I'd be like, No, like, right. I, I don't know the scenario sometimes you do it just for the power move yeah it's so hard to say no because you're like she's never gonna do this again yeah, like, yeah. Not, not for another like three years right so i gotta initiate you know i gotta yeah. say yes so yeah yeah. Uh, yeah and it wouldn't take a lot she doesn't have to yeah. stick her tongue in my ear literally yeah. hand on the leg i'm in yeah i'm mean, like oh here we go yeah game on game on <laughs> well I, your wife is very beautiful so you. you know yeah she's and she's a great chick yeah, um, she's, she's pretty. She's pretty darn good, and uh, so now, yes, yeah, so now the kids get uh, getting a little older, uh, and and you know it, it it's nice. She's kid, uh, kids. We 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 walk her to school every day. It's school oh, you two, can walk to the school two blocks away. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, and and I I score so many points doing that because uh-huh. the days I'm home, which is about three sometimes four days a week, I'm doing that. Yeah, and I just look around. and I go. Look at all these other kids with their single parent right, dropping them off. Right. No, I'm yeah. here. Yeah. There, there, there's like three dads that do the drop off every day. And we all mm-hmm. just kind of look at each other like, look at us. Yeah. We're doing it. Right. Right. It feels good. And I, I found a, uh, a thing. My, my daughter, I put it on Instagram. Okay. My daughter set, uh, wrote a, wrote a note she was in school and i guess everybody was supposed to write a note and so she wrote here just take a look at it and i'll read it to you it's like it's like hieroglyph let's see if you can read it see if you can read it i just found it we're going through old stuff uh popper daddy no dear Uh, daddy oh dear oh oh, that's dear okay yeah dear daddy uh 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 you may not be able to read all the words but you'll get the gist of it i love that you were here 
I wish that you were here. Oh, I wish that you were here. I love you. I want you to come to. I don't know that word. What's come that? home, I think. Oh, come home. Some. I wish. I I wish I was home with you right now. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, dude, that's pretty good. I saw that and it broke my heart because, you know, look, we make sacrifices. We signed up. Yeah. For this, yes, our wives also signed up for this they yes. it's not like they married us on an arranged marriage they dated us they were aware of our schedule yes. how much we were away we were doing it i mean i don't know your situation but i was certainly uh a comedian when my wife met me yeah you know so it's like okay this schedule is established right you know and that's gonna keep happening yeah and uh so i'm gonna make a tremendous amount of money yes ideally uh so yeah so it's like we we obviously agreed they agreed yep Kids, not so much. The kid did not agree. No, kid just kid just wants the kid just wants the parents around. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But there's... I'll tell you this: if you yeah. ever have those thoughts, mm -hmm. because I when when my kids were your kids' age, I uh, I did feel torn, and I had some sad days on the road, especially when it when it yeah. turned into one of those like, hey, we added a Sunday, or we got a corporate date also in Tennessee two days later. Yeah, and you're like, and now you're alone in a hotel room killing a day you have oh. no show that night and yeah. you just start to feel really but the thing uh, here's the key mm -hmm. kids just want consistency yeah they want to know that when dad's home he's walking me to school yep he's spending more time with me than most kids parents yep. and then you know and then he's just not here for a couple of days as yep. long as they're used to the rhythm of that it's yep. fine and right now she is and she she is also used to the rhythm of if i'm gone and we've done this many times. She'll look at my wife and go, I, I, I want to talk to daddy. Yeah. And she goes, cool. FaceTime. Right. Boom, I'm right there. Right. And I'm and I don't care what I'm doing on the road. If I get if I she'll send me a text of like, I don't know what you're doing right now. Right. But, you know, uh, He'll tell, tell yeah. the lady boy to go grab a cup of coffee. Yeah. Go down to the lobby. <laughs> busy himself herself. I'm not sure what lady boy's <laughs> pronouns are yet. I'm getting to it. I'll respect them when I hear them. Uh, but yeah, then it's like, okay, let's go. Like, yeah. Like, let's right. talk. Let, let's be engaged. Mm. And so far, so good, man. Uh, my daughter's in a wonderful stage right now where she says, she says, I love you almost annoyingly too much. Uh, and every time I get annoyed by it, I, I go, don't get annoyed by it. Right. One time there will be, there will come a day where you will be begging yep. for her to say those words. 14 so. years old. That's where it's going to happen. <laughs> that's that's every, happen. every girl from 14 to 17 is just a nightmare. That's, that's what I'm banking on. I've yeah. heard that from so many people and I go, okay, from the ages of like 12 to 14 to 2022, 20, my daughter probably won't like be that much yeah right because it's right. a lot of no's it's a, yep. a lot of restrictions but my my daughter's 20 and she came back hard she yeah. loves us she comes oh, in she drinks great. wine with my wife every night yeah. went to the movies with us the other night she cooks she went shot she went grocery shopping for us the other day wow and this is a girl who did not talk to us yeah mumbled mumbled for three years and that was and she's 19 she's 20. Oh, she's 20. Okay, so that means COVID happened when she was 17, 16. She got fucked. She missed her senior prom. She missed graduation. Oh. Yeah, it was bad. I, I, and then, yeah, yeah, I could see that. So let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you have the book? Do you have the book where you write down cute things your daughter said? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you will treasure that when you get older. And, yeah, and yeah, she yeah. will get such a kick out of it. Yeah, and you just read them. Every now and then, I have, the, I have a note on my phone that it, has all the things but uh any I, good quotes i mean uh my favorite one was by the way i love that we transitioned from blowing a guy in the woods <laughs> the trannies in thailand to one of the cute things your daughter said yeah and but that's <laughs> but like that's comedians though comedians do this comedians there is we like talking about the feel good and then when we talk about the things that make us laugh we go to the craziest right. spaces possible right the, because that's what's going to make your fellow comic laugh, and it's why we're unhirable. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'm a. It's it's actually going to come full circle right now. It, okay. I, I'm going to link the 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 the. the it's not possible. Topics. It's you, not possible. Say no. Nope. Say not possible. It's never been done. My, one of my favorite things my daughter said was we were in we were in Target, 
And uh, we we sometimes would br- bring toys with her when she goes with us to a store. So she's stimulated, just like little action figures, whatever. And she she was in a Blue's Clues phase. And there's a character on there called Tickety Talk. And it's a little clock toy, and she's got it. And we're pushing her in the cart. She she dropped the toy, unbeknownst to us. We didn't. All we hear is my daughter in her cute three year old voice at the time, just going, "I lost my cock." <laughs> I lost my cock. I'm dying laughing. My wife is just like, okay, okay. Like she's trying to like be like, we'll find. Yeah. It. Like, and then it clicks for her instantly that yeah. she's saying clock. Uh, but like, I'm just crack it up. Other parents are staring at yeah. us. And I and, and you should have said you need blue chew. <laughs> You'll always know what it is then. Yeah, yeah, you have yourself some blue chew. Yeah, yeah. It, it that was that was one of my favorites. That's good. I'll go. I'll go for the sweet things. Like there was there was one time uh, she was like two, and we're on the couch and we're and we're watching one of her shows, and she turns and she and 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 she looks to my wife and goes cuddles and then that you know obviously means cuddles so she gets her up and then and then she looks at me and goes daddy cuddle and i go yeah so then i I come in my dog's a pit bull he sees the family get together he's like i want it on yeah so he wanders over just kind of nuzzles in Uh and then i'm just like this 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 is this is it this is like the greatest moment of my life the christmas card this this is the christmas card and then my daughter just looks up and goes i'm so glad i have my family and i'm just like uh, yeah. All right. Oh uh, wow. What color what color car you want? Yeah, I'll, right. I'll, I'll 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 buy it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Whatever you want. Yeah. It's going to happen. I love and, it. And 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 because now did you find this as the guy that was on the road? When you came home are were you like the pushover of like she wants something you're like Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know the the you walk in the door and like you just you need it you need the so so you take them to the park you give your yeah. wife a break you're like yeah. honey you go get your nails done yeah i got her yeah. and then you and then you go do something and you you just don't get tired like i wouldn't care if i took a connecting flight from buffalo Ooh. that left at 5 a.m i walked in the door i always had energy i was oh, good for i was you. ready you're better than me then i <laughs> i walk in i'm just like all right, I'll see you at four o'clock. Oh, really? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I can't, man. Yeah, I try. I try to like lay down on the couch and hopefully she just wants to like watch uh-huh. TV or something. But man, yeah. yeah, I gotta sleep. But then I gotta. Yeah, right. but then, but then you pop up and you just try to do all the things. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited that she's getting a little older. I'm like, cool. Disneyland's coming. That means we're going to go to Disneyland. Yeah. You know, uh, that was uh, Halloween this year. So that's a good age for Halloween. Perfect. Yeah. Ah, oh, the best. We we took her in the daytime. She was a banana. I was a banana. My wife was Carmen Miranda. Uh, it was great. The two dwarves were bananas. <laughs> Did you go around on her head? Yeah, yeah, just yeah. spin her. Uh, yeah. No, uh, uh, I I was making banana puns the whole night. Uh huh. We'd go to a you know we 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 go to a house trick or treat. We get the candy and I'd be like, all right, we got a split. <laughs> and uh, oh, I laughed every time. My wife rolled her eyes. I laughed every time. The house laughed. Favorite holiday of the year. Oh. I love Halloween. And then we do all that in the daytime because she's four. So we bring her out in the daytime and do the, and do the early trick-or-treating yeah. at like five, six o'clock. And then we went back to the house and we live in a good neighborhood where there's a lot of kids coming around. We put two chairs on the front, made ourselves two cocktails, uh-huh. just sat there. Handed out candy, commenting on all the kids. I'm making dad jokes with all the, uh, with all the kids. Yeah, walking up, and my daughter wanted to be a part of that, so she's like out there sitting with us, and she's chill. She's not running around. She's just nice. kind of like watching all the kids coming up. And my wife had a brilliant idea to give out hot Cheetos. Oh, uh-huh. so that teenagers loved us. Yeah, yeah. We were the house. Uh huh. They were telling other teenagers they got hot Cheetos. Yeah, they're and texting each other. They're yeah. they're 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 coming around. We got adults that are like, oh, thank you. Not, not, none of the Snickers bar. Uh, and of course, when the teenagers like you, you're like, all right, my house is safe tonight. Yeah. We're good. No eggs, no nothing. Nice. It was yeah, great. My, my friend great, does. Great holiday. Well, first of all, let's talk about some of the moms with mm-hmm. the young kids that come yeah. around and they're dressed as a cat and they're in a bodysuit. 
and they got some face paint on and you're just looking and you're like take it's like you with that guy in the three way yeah move your eyes away yep don't look at her because this is about the kids. It's about the kids. But they know what they're doing. Those moms know what they're they doing. They know what they're doing. Yeah. I and if and if they got a three or four year old, that that means, you know, they're very proud of themselves. They uh -huh. got they, you know, they got their body back, or yep. maybe they went and got a mommy makeover. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Right. I, I fresh respect set, you either. Fresh way. set of tits. They got fresh the whole, set, yeah. they got the lipo done. Yep. And they're just like showing it off. And, yep. God bless you. They earned it. They earned it. Yeah. You gave birth to life. You're welcoming them back into the fold. Welcome back. Yes. You, we missed you, you. Yes. And and you should be able to be proud and show that off. Yes. And great. And and me staring a little bit too long is just giving you a return on your investment. Yes. It I is mean, why else did you do it? You're already married. Your yeah. husband doesn't care. Yeah. Thankfully, thankfully, when those women would come around, uh, there was one. There was one that was like literally a sexy spider. Uh huh. It was a, she had all these arms coming out of her, but then like a purple <laughs> bikini. And I was just like, did not see that one coming. Did not see. Yeah, cats. Yeah, cat. Cats a top fiver. Right. You know the it, some sometimes they'll they'll literally just have like whatever tight suit, and then they just put cat ears on. They're like, yeah. it's a costume. Right. It's like, no, right. it's not. No. But. Um. Yeah, sexy spider. That was one, and I just kind of looked at my wife like sexy spider, and then and then my wife, thank God, is just like I know. <laughs> That's the key with your wife. If you're looking at women, is always find a tangential thing to point out. Not yeah. did you see the tits on this one? No, no, it's like no. Look, did you see the spider? Yeah, outfit spider. Yeah, yeah. And then you say, you know, you slip a little something like that. Like, gosh, I think she did okay, but if she had an ass like yours, she could have pulled that out. <laughs> she could have really pulled that outfit off. That you do that and then just pop a blue chip because yeah, it's happening blue that night. It's happening yeah, that yeah, night. Yeah. I don't need a sexy spider. I my, got it. My friend does a thing in the neighborhood, uh, Matt Malloy. Okay. And uh, he sets up a little microphone and a speaker. And when kids come by, they have a choice. They can get one piece of candy for free. That's a given. Okay. If they want a second piece, yes. they have to either sing a song or tell a joke. And Love so it. It, the, he lives on the walk streets where our producer, Paul, lived okay. right right across the street from him. Okay. And so there were tons of kids. Kids would come from all over LA to walk the walk streets because wow. it's a sidewalk with houses next Got to them. And, the, and, and there's millions of them. So kids come and then a crowd kind of gathers and these kids are killing it. Like, my favorite joke one year was, um, what do you call a fish with no eyes? What's that? Fish. Come on. <laughs> That's fantastic. Great joke. Kid killed. Yeah. And so they get the second piece of candy, and then he would have Dixie cups with beer or wine, just like an ounce for the parents. And they were like, thank you so much. Yeah, just a little hit for the parents. Yeah. You know, you want? I want to be that house now. Right. I want to be that house where all the, you know, like, uh, all the families feel like they can come over. Yeah, and it's good stuff. Yeah. You, know, like, you mean year round or just on Halloween? Year round. Yeah. Come on by. My wife likes to decorate the front yard mm -hmm. and for all the seasons. She's a she's a plastic flamingo lady. So we got no flamingos kidding. on the front yard. Very Miami. Yeah. And she's got them in all different outfits. Like, Is she from Florida? She's not. She just likes flamingos. Wow. So uh yeah. So, That's my favorite my favorite line in Scarface is when he's sitting in the hot tub looking at the TV mm -hmm. and there's a bunch of flamingos and he goes, Fly Pelican. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God bless you, Al Pacino, and your yeah. fake Cuban accent. Um, Gotta love so it. So tell me about your neighborhood. Do you do you do you have friends? We have a very tight neighborhood. Everybody knows each other. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Uh, uh, so and, and also there's another comedian in my neighborhood. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Dave Williamson. Of course. I'm very yeah. close to him. Yeah. Dave lives a few blocks away from me. Oh, that's amazing. So uh, Dave, he's great comic. Great be comic. Better guy and even better barbecue. Barbecue. Chef. Yep. Oh, my God. He does a little comedy show in the city. He tells people, bring your own chairs. Yeah. They do, and and it's a great little workout room for me when I'm down there, and uh, yeah, it's yeah, I've awesome. done that room. It's fun. Yeah, and he serves his barbecue. Serves barbecue. Yeah, and literally, and I've been to Kansas City. I've been to Texas, been to St. Louis, all the barbecue hubs. Yeah, Dave Williamson has the best brisket I've ever had in my entire yeah. life. Yeah, wow. In Entire life. Wow, that's and big I, praise. And I love barbecue. Yeah. So yeah, brisket's my go-to. Uh, yeah, I did good. some dates with. Uh, he opens for uh, Bird a lot. Yep. 
So we were down in Florida like six months ago and mm -hmm. he we got to I think it was Tampa and he just like somehow wrangled some some smokers and he fired up barbecue right outside the tour bus. Dude's got four smokers in his front yard. Yeah, it's great. So, he, dude, you, his son, guy. thank God, his son, you know, who just won a water polo championship. They're like the state champs or something. Yeah. Got in a horrible car accident, like he, probably six months ago. He is okay. He's uh, fine. But yeah, it was a thing where Dave actually, as a father, this terrifies you. Yeah. Dave heard the crash in his house. Right, I heard that. And then had to run out. And he's like, as I was running out, I'm like, he, he knew that yeah. it was his kid. And then seeing your kid in a car and just wanting to rip a door off. Right. And then, but yeah, but kid's okay. Yeah. Thank God. And uh, yeah, they caught the the guys that hit him. There are people doing like some street racing or something. No shit. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah. Uh, that, that one, you're just like, oh. But then Dave's. This is why it pays to be like uh, that the, 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 a, a good dude in the in in the neighborhood. Like the cops would come to the hospital, check on the kid. Oh, really? Came to the house, checked on them. They said, "Don't worry, we're you know getting all our." Also, why it's nice to live in a smaller town like like where we live, and because uh, the cops were like, "Don't worry, all our resources are going to this." I'm like, "Yeah." That's Safe amazing. town. Yeah. You know, you're not one of those towns where it's like, yeah, we got a bunch of uh, drug dealers and murderers. to. Dude, I'm in Venice. They don't even show up. No. It's like 45 minutes. No. Yeah. You're like, there's a guy taking a shit on my front right. yard with a machete. You're right. like, well, is he stabbing you yet? Are you on fire? Yeah. No. All right. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Yeah. Yeah. That Venice has got to be. You want to play the Neil Brennan game of. How liberal are you? Yeah, it, it's it's got to be such a mind fuck where the real estate is what it is. It's very expensive. And then on the same patch of land where you got your house, you got your mortgage and everything like that. There's a tent, and you're like, it's the richest and poorest part of maybe the country. <laughs> All I mean, the same it's like time. San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, there's a lot of petty crime. If you leave something on your yard, it will be stolen. It's gone. But at the same time, like there's, there's breaking and entering a little bit, but for the most part, <laughs> a dusting, a, a a dusting, dusting of breaking and entering. Um, but it's, you know, I've been there for 22 years and yeah. I've never, other than a bike stolen off the yard, we've never had any, any issues. And, You'll take that. But the upside is that it is a truly diverse place. It's full of artists. We got a theater behind us. We got an art gallery behind us. Yeah, that's uh, cool. We're a mile from the beach. Again, like the neighbors are all really tight. Yeah. And uh, and it's it's a pretty magic place. I yeah. really love it. And Good. and and I'm glad that it has bad reputation because less people come there. That's the thing. Uh, if, if, if you're paying attention, I haven't even said the city that me and Dave live in, although if you know Dave, you can figure it out very quickly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. And there's a reason why I'm like, no one else come here. That's this right. Is great. Yeah. This is awesome. Right. It's right. a great city. Like I said, we walk we walk the kid to school. There's sidewalks. Uh huh. There's there two blocks away is her school, two blocks the other way is a dog park. And they're great schools. Um, yeah. My son actually played on a club soccer team that we, we drove there three days a week for four years. I love, love that, that area. And, yeah. And uh, and close enough to the airport where I'm like, cool. Right. Yeah. Five to ten minutes and I'm and I'm at my gate. Absolutely. That that's the life. Now, if you're a young, hip, 20 two year old and you're going out to the bars and clubs and trying to score whatever you're trying to score. Probably not the area. Not your for you. place. Not, no, you're not. You're not going to have fun. No, it's but, great for families, though. Yeah, that, and that and that's what I love. And that's the thing. Never thought I'd be the family dude. Yeah, you know, I you know, rewind back to the first ten minutes of jokes in our conversations of this yeah. podcast. You understand? I thought I was going to be that guy. You were an explorer. Yeah, on a mission. Yeah, I was. I was going to be that dude. You know, my whole life, but then obviously you meet the wife and then you move to a, 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 a good neighborhood like that. You have a kid and you're just like, I kind of like this. I, yeah. I'm, I'm waking up with way less hangovers. Yeah. Uh, you're but, having less insipid conversations with people uh, feeling feeling bad because you've got an agenda. Yes. Yes. There is a lot. That, of that. that was the worst part is I always felt like 
when I was picking up a woman, mm. I got the sense most of the time that she had a different agenda than I did. She well, she maybe yeah, wanted your, to get to know me. Yours was to get laid. Yeah. That was not her agenda. Right. She can get laid whenever. Exactly. She can just be like, oh, I feel like getting laid. I'm going to go do that now. So it's a kind of you're on false footing to begin with. Yes. Yes. And uh, it's nice that in this neighborhood, is, there's not a lot of show business people because yeah. uh, uh, I went to the improv Christmas party last night and uh, don't get me wrong. saw some great people, but literally from the walk from the front door to uh, uh, the room where I was hanging out with Chris Porter and we were just having tequila, like two comics came up and said like, Hey Brad, I see you're doing a lot of tour dates. You got a spot. You got to, can, yeah, can I come on? Just right, like, right. I know. Like, I get it. It's a hustle. They're trying. Hey, I respect, I respect the hustle. It. Absolutely. The and then time. you get asked to do eight different podcasts. Yep. Yep. And uh, yep. so who were the, and who I'm, did. And, and I'm promoting a special. Uh, it's called Starfish. It's on Veeps. It comes out December 21st. Why Why December 21st? Why December 21st, Brad? Isn't it, that the winter solstice? The shortest day of the year. Oh, got it. Hey, so hey now. There. Okay. So the, I'm yeah. going to do the vernal equinox because of my cock. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best comeback i've heard to that line uh well done so yeah there's so the who are the who are the people that you were happy to see there oh happy to see adam ferrara oh yeah love he's that the best. guy yep love that guy making fun of him because how mad he is that tommy devito is on the giants and not the jets uh-huh he's you know he's a diehard jets yeah fan. And so he's just like you don't think we want the italian of italians on right. the jets oh, that's all his family uh, Vinny Testaverde was the last good Italian yeah, they had over there. Yeah, saw him, saw saw Chris Porter, saw uh, he opens for Eliza Schlesinger a lot. Hunter Hill, he, he's always really delightful to see. Yeah, and uh, yeah, just some to good see people. Rita the Booker. Yeah, saw, she's yeah, the greatest. Saw, saw Rita. Saw this. This was a cool moment. Saw Nick Novicki. Now, if you don't know who Nick Novicki is, um, he he's another dwarf comedian, and uh, him and I have actually known each other long before we were comedians. We've known each other since we were like five, six years old. Yeah. And now. No shit. Yeah. Did you grow up near each other? No, we just through Little People of America, LPA. We go to conventions and stuff like that. Oh, wow. And I knew him. And uh, now we're both comedians. And he opens up for Nate Bargatze. That's doing arenas. Yeah. You know, so I'm seeing photos on Nick's Instagram of him crushing it to an arena. Wow. And we and, and we just had a cool little moment where we saw each other. We're like. We fucking did it, man. Yeah. We fucking did it. You know, I'm out there doing my thing. He's out there doing his thing. We're we're, we're both great. successful. We're both married. We both got kids that we're raising and feeding with our jokes. We did the That's thing. That's crazy. Yeah. So we did the thing. Wow. So it, it, it that that was a really fun, nice moment to have mm -hmm. where we just you just kind of stop for a moment and go. Yeah, the odds weren't in our favor. Yeah. You know, because if you think about all the successful dwarf comedians before Nick and I, you got Tanya Lee Davis. End of list. <laughs> like that's it. That's it. Really? I'm I'm, I'm I'm sure there's one out there be like, I did it. Like, but I I know of what about the lollipop gang? They were comedians. Stand up, were they doing the board nah, spell? Nah, nah, but they could have booked corporate dates if they wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> right. Could have done a lot. You Let know? me ask you this. It's Christmas, yeah. and uh it made me think, have you ever played an elf or been asked to play an elf? Every year. What a stupid question. Every fucking year. Yeah. Um, it, but th there's a there's a joke in one of the specials, but uh, this it's a true story. Um, I was going on an audition for an elf. Uh, this is years ago, and on the breakdown where it tells you about the part, it says bring your own elf costume from home. <laughs> and I was pissed. What off. are you kidding me? I'm already wearing it. Yeah, I was yeah. pissed off, but at the same time, I'm like, I mean, I have it. Uh... I have an elf costume. <laughs> don't think I don't. I do. I have another one now. So yeah, it's always there. But um, uh, uh, uh I haven't done. Yeah, I, I I played an elf in a really uh weird Christmas movie that my nephew loved. Uh, called Hercules Saves Christmas. Now, when you hear Hercules Saves Christmas, you think, oh, the Greek mythological character. Nope. Hercules is the name of a pit bull. It aired on it aired on Animal Planet. <laughs> I, out of all the Christmas movies ever made, yeah. it's one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, it's one of them. Did you ever do do a, a live elf show? A, a live elf. Uh, 
No, because I know a lot of little people do like they go to Radio City Music Hall right. as, as like a Christmas spectacular that uh, auditions and hires a lot of little people to play else. Uh, never did one of those. Kind of proud of that. But like, I can't say that like if, if you're a little person in this business, you've done things. Right. You've done parts that you're not so proud of and gigs you're not. All right. So. This, this is the one for me. There's an artist. He's actually a really great artist and a really wonderful guy. His name is Michael Goddard. He does a lot of vice painting. So like uh, drinking and gambling and stuff like that. Smoking, stuff like that. And uh, his thing is like when he does a, a picture of a martini, the olive will have arms and legs and will be doing an activity uh -huh. around the martini glass. It'll be ice skating. It'll be driving a car. It'll be doing something. So at his art shows, you would hire little people to be dressed up as olives and grapes and get in the glass and yeah, stand next to the paintings. Uh huh. Later, oh, okay. Like, welcome people in and like sometimes serve drinks and stuff. And was it a little humiliating? A little bit, but the money was really good. Uh huh. Uh, he would fly me out from LA to Vegas in a quick flight, but still, and put me up for a few days and pay me like six seven hundred dollars cash for like two days of work yeah and this is you know almost 20 years ago uh-huh so pretty good yeah for a college kid yeah it's great yeah so i would do that and uh and so but i got to do some cool things i got to meet uh vince neal and kind of hang out with vince oh, neal really? from motley Crue. yeah they were friends uh uh goddard and vince neal so uh, yeah, there there's some cool stories. What's this thing you did in Vegas? You did a Cirque du Soleil thing. You were we the did. first person to headline. First comedian. Uh, first yeah. comedian to headline a Cirque du Soleil show. Yes, that's incredible. I did a show in Vegas called Mad Apple. It's still running at the, the New York, New York. I helped launch the show. I did it for three months. Uh, lived in Vegas. Uh, uh -huh. we, we would fly home on the two off days a week, and uh, it was great. It was wonderful. I went on af after the guys that juggle each other with their feet. <laughs> Not too many people can say that. Um, and you would just do straight stand up straight for 20 minutes or so? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, uh, it, it was really interesting because when we come out as comedians in our shows, the audience is generally familiar with who we are. Yeah. Um, um, and we can they know what they're going to get. They know they're going to get comedy. At, at a Cirque show, they may, they may not even speak English, the audience. Right. Like, they're there to have a Plus, good... you got kids in the audience, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, this was billed as an adult show, okay. but people still brought kids in. Yeah. Um, for, for the comedy. That, like, that's why it was an adult show. It was a comedy. And uh, uh, so I'd go out there. These people don't know who I am. All right. And that's why I did it, because I wanted the challenge. It kind of yeah. scared me a little right. bit. Right. And I was like, yeah. I, was... I really liked the camaraderie of it, being part of a cast. Uh, -huh. uh, we got got to know a lot of the cast members, and what are they like? So talented. Yeah, I mean, most of them are like Brazilian and uh -huh. Ukrainian, and like it was weird because we had some Russians and some Ukrainians in the cast when oh, the war started. No kidding, that was fun. You don't want to be <laughs> you don't want to be spinning a Russian when you're Ukrainian with your feet. Yeah, you might no, slip. No, no. Yeah, there's uh, yeah, there's guys from the Dominican Republic that uh, it, like there's just all over the world. You'd come and you hear everyone's stories, how they got there really amazing stuff and uh, just really really talented people the, and here's the part that makes us realize because we do how many shows a week how many shows in our life it's normal to us what we do as mm -hmm. comedians we go on stage we tell some jokes good it's not normal to everybody else so i'm doing uh i do my set it gets done right after my set this is on one particular show the the light board malfunctions and when the light board malfunctions, it takes about 10 minutes to reboot the whole thing. So we have 10 minutes, and they say this, we're going to have about 10 minutes of silence. And I'm like, no, we're not. Whoa. Give me a microphone. Right. Get, let me go back out there. And they're like, yeah. what are you going to do? I'm like, I'll figure it out. Yeah. Like, this is fine. Yeah. Comedians, we do this. We right. talk. I did, you know, 15 minutes earlier. I have more material. Yeah. I don't have just 15 minutes. So I run back out there. And under just a, a a makeshift spotlight, like the like the emergency work lights, I the audio thankfully still worked. I I tell I tell jokes. I do more stand up. 
audience is having a great time. Once I get the signal that the light board's ready to go, I'm, I fire them back up again. Like, you guys ready for more show? We're going to do a lot of stuff. There's going to be an Empire State Building later. Who knows what's going to happen there? Uh-huh. And uh, everyone's cheering. And then we and then we start the show up again. When I walk backstage, there's a, a Russian hand balancer who balances on his hands. But he does it at the top of our makeshift Empire State Building. And like he has two little blocks, he just does tricks like balancing, doing handstands. It's yeah. incredible, and he's jacked to shit. He's got muscles on muscles on muscles, and he just walks up to me with this look in his eye and goes, "I have no idea how you do what you do." <laughs> I'm like, "How yeah, I do what I do? Yeah, I talk. Yeah, we all have the skill to talk. Uh-huh. You know, minus mutes, but like for the most part, we all we all could do. No one can do what you do. Yeah." And 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 if I mess up, oh, a joke didn't land. Oh well, I get a little silence. It's a little uncomfortable. I got another joke ready to go. You mess up, you die. Right, right. You fall off our makeshift Empire State Building. Yeah, yeah. There were some weird moments. Uh, now I remember doing a strip club once in Boston, <laughs> and the strip and the stripper gets up there and she's like, you know, spreading her. This is fully nude. You know, yeah. split wet beavers and. Yeah. And they're in the and back that's just room. The name of the drink, wet beaver. <laughs> they're getting grinded on in the VIP. Yeah. And then I, I just and she comes out. She goes, "I don't know how you can do that." <laughs> <laughs> I and mean, you're so vulnerable on stage. Yes. You're like, don't you I'm feel- vulnerable. Yeah. You just got fingered by a fucking yeah. sixty year old businessman who slipped you an, a, an extra Benjamin. Are you kidding me? <laughs> how how I do that? Yeah, right. It's madness. There, 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 there was, you know, there was a couple weird moments like that where the power goes down. There's one time where uh, there's an act um, that is at, at, the, at the end of the show. It's called the Wheel of Death. Uh-huh. And it's where, like, a guy gets in this, like, hamster wheel and it spins around in circles. It goes way up high and then comes way down. It's a centrifugal force, the whole thing. And it's amazing. He dan- he he gets out of it. He dances on top of it. He jumps rope in the middle. It's incredible. Wow. At one point, he he's doing a move where uh where he it, he jumps out of the wheel. The wheel comes back around. He's supposed to grab it, and then it flings him back up on top. And he's uh-huh. done it a million times. Yeah. This night, the wheel comes back around. He grabs it. It flings him up, and he lets go. So it flings him up in the air, and he comes down. Hits the stage, and, and the stage has no padding. No, no padding. There, there, there is, but the pad didn't. The pad wasn't there. Right. <laughs> and uh, and I'm just like ah, and, and the people come out. They throw up X sign, which means you know stop show, whatever. And I'm just like okay, and then I, I'm up next. I I do my second part of the comedy, so I'm just like here we go, and I just. Run up on stage. Did they like, take him off on a stretcher? I mean, they they took him out. Thankfully, he was under his own power. Okay, but, uh, like that, like that's my buddy. Yeah, and I don't know how he is. And I'm just like, all right, I got to tell some jokes now. Right, so I'm telling some jokes and trying to get everyone back into it. Like, hey, that, you know, that's why they call it the wheel of death. <laughs> <laughs> like, what'd you guys think that was gonna happen? <laughs> wheel of death. Yeah, it, he's it, not a gerbil. People. Yeah, it's he's not, a human. It, it, it's not the wheel of that was close. Yeah, no, it's the wheel yeah, of death. Yeah. Like, do, like doing the whole thing. Um, yeah. Oh, I actually remember the joke I made because uh, the guy, uh, the guy is from Mexico, and and I went, "Well, wheel of death, everyone." It's true what they say. Mexicans really do do all the jobs that none of us want to do. <laughs> <laughs> crowd had a good laugh at that one, and. Uh, yeah, but then I went. I ran backstage, checked on him. He was okay, thank God. Wow! But uh, that's amazing. Yeah, but it was a trip, and I hope to be back and do it again at some point. But it won't be for a while because if you go to my website, bradwilliamscomedy dot com, you will see you will see a tour, my friend. Over, I, I'm going to read your dates in over a minute. Seventy dates. I mean, it's incredible. You're not going to read all seventy. No, but, I'm going to uh, read up until July. Holy but, shit. but you've got uh but you work in good rooms, man. You work yeah. in some theaters, you yeah. work in A clubs. Yeah. And uh and it's great. But I wanna before we before I read your credits, yeah, there's a little thing. I think okay. we did it last time. Okay. We did. Fastballs with fits. Love fastballs with fits. Right. Yes. All right. Let's go. Uh there are two types of people in the world. Okay. Go. The Williams and the rest. That's something that's something my that's something my uncle always told me. Really? Yeah, he said there's two types of people in this world, the Williams and the rest, and it just always stuck with me. Who are the Williams? 
that's my last name. <laughs> I was thinking Serena. I was oh. like, Mike Williams. <laughs> no, so it, it, it was always like, uh, I don't know, you might, uh, like, I've seen that, like, the uh, Harbaugh's do a thing where, like, the dad's like, who, who's who got it better than us? And the kids yeah. all, and the grandkids all, all yell out, nobody. Is like, that the guy who killed his son? Harbaugh? I'm thinking of the guy in South Carolina. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know who that is. Oh, talking about Harbaugh, the coach. Yeah, like oh. Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his dad. So, right. uh, it, it was just all this. It was always a thing that so clannish. Yeah, yeah. It's us against the world. Yeah, I always heard that. I kind, I, I kind of, I kind of liked it. But all right, but if we're going for like a serious thing, there's two types of people in this world. I'll, okay, there's two types of people in this world. The people that don't want to be noticed that the last thing they want is is to stop somebody else's progression of their day. And there's the other type of person that that's all they want yeah. to get off on that. That's and that could imply in so many things. I'm talking about even something as simple as crossing the street and a car comes up and stops. If I'm the one crossing... I do the fake jog. Uh huh. I, I do the fake little like, yeah. okay, I'm going, sure. I'm going, I'm going, yeah. and I'm not moving any faster. Than and you I throw up the hand wave. Yeah, the hand doesn't go all the way up, but it, 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 there's a hey. motion. There's yeah. a motion. Throw a little, hey, yeah. good, thank you. Just doing that. And then there's the guy that dances in the street or mm, takes more time or yeah. like as a conversation on their phone. When I'm driving, it's just like I don't want anyone to know I'm here. Right. Just, uh, I'm just a car. Just, the people that. You pull up to it. There's no parking in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. and you see a car. You see a guy get in it. Yeah. And you pull up next to him, and you motion, "Are you leaving?" Yeah. And he says yes, and then you back up and wait. And he checks his emails. Yeah. Hangs out. Yep. You're just waiting for that reverse light to yeah. come on. Yeah. It's it, it's that guy. Yeah. So there are the people that are aware that other people exist. Yeah. And the rest. All right. I like that. Yeah. Uh, what have you turned down recently? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, turned down a lot of gigs that are like, hey, man, I got a bar in San Diego. Yeah. Pays pays a hundred bucks, but you get free beer. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, it's a two hour drive there and two hour drive. They'll give back. you a meal. They They'll got be, great food. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, my wife cooks. Dude. Yes. I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. I got a kid now and I get it. Well, once again, I respect the hustle you want. Uh, a, a a name comic to come perform your venue. Totally understand. Yeah, but I'm not doing it. No, I'm not. No, so, and you know what? Pay me. Pay yes. me for it. Yes. Like on. I know you're getting a hundred people. You charge you twenty bucks a head. That's two grand. And you want to give me a hundred bucks so you can, you know? Yeah. You know, you should lose money on me <laughs> because you can now advertise that Brad right. Williams played this yes. club. Yes, it's one of those scenarios, and I tour. Go to brightwomenscomedy.com. You'll see my tour dates. When I'm home, man, I'm home. Yeah. If you want to get me to leave again, you got to you gotta pay me. You come down to the store, though, out. pretty pretty frequently. Yeah, I go to the store. Not as much as you used to. No, because I have a date uh, February 10th at the Ace Hotel. I'm doing the theater at the Ace Hotel. Okay. And uh, so I didn't want to like be at the store every night while they're advertising me. I want to be like, no, you want to see Brad? You guys go see him at the Ace Hotel. Pay Not, for him. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, come see me there. February 10th, Los Angeles, Ace Hotel. All right. Who is your dinner for five? Oh, I've thought about this a lot. Okay. Dinner for five. Number one, Conan O'Brien. Nice. He has to be there. He's. You need a driver. He's going to drive the conversation. I've never met him. He's one of the people I want to meet so bad. Yeah. But Conan O'Brien, because and then every time I, I hear him on a podcast, he's doing bits. Yeah. He's doing, he does bits. He yes ands everything. Mm -hmm. I want to meet that dude. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, Con uh, Conan O'Brien will be there. Um, and then uh, these are two ESPN personalities that I think would just be so great to hang out with. Uh, and thankfully, I've gotten to hang out with one of them, and she is fantastic. Uh, I've hung out with Sarah, uh, Sarah Spain. She's awesome. Uh -huh. uh, and just, you know, she's a, she's a she's a hot woman who could talk sports and no and funny as hell. Yeah. Definitely could have been a comedian if she wanted to. Went into writing and she's really good at that. Um, Checks a lot of boxes. Yeah, Mina Kimes, same reason. Mm -hmm. You know, Mina Kimes from ESPN. We could talk football and she she's she's funny as hell. So yeah, uh uh uh, Conan O'Brien, 
uh, Mina Kimes, Sarah Spain. Now, is it five including me? Or... No, five guests. Five guests. So I got two more. Okay. Oh, man, this one's hard. You got your eye candy. You got your humor. Yeah, got, got humor. I'm trying to think if you got we need your sports. Yeah, I'm trying to think if we need like another sport. Because for me, I want personalities. I don't want like. What about an intellect? Don't you want an intellect there? Oh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. There you go. Neil deGrasse Tyson. That's good. Well done. Yeah. yeah. It was it, either him or a Malcolm Gladwell, but I, I think Malcolm Gladwell is a little too f philosophical for me mm -hmm. for, a, for a dinner party. Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, he can land stuff. Yeah. Yeah, he gets it. Yeah. You can mention a movie. He'll ruin it for you. Uh, <laughs> why? That, that could never happen. Yeah, right, but he, right. But he likes to, he's an educator. He likes to make the advanced topics that he's talking about into bite-sized, palatable morsels for us for us mouth breathers. Yes, that we can digest. Yes, and I think that would be great. Um, All right, you got one left, and you don't have any legends. Oh, can they be alive or no? Dead? They're alive, but alive. you know, a legend. Legend. I mean, you got your Bill Murray's out there, your Steve Ooh. Martin's. See. Steve Martin is a guy I would love to talk to, but he's one of those guys where everyone says like, hey, when they say don't meet your heroes, yeah, <laughs> it's like Steve, he's very reserved. I agree with that. He's not on. Right. So I want a guy that's going to be on. Yeah. So I might go, and he's also a friend of Conan, I might go Marty Short. Oh, that's good. Always on. Yeah. Stories for Story days. Storyteller. Great storyteller. Stories for days. Old Hollywood stories. Yes. And and stuff like that. Uh uh, or if I wanted to go younger, I might go Bill Hader. Oh. Everyone seems to have a great like everyone that I've I've, I've met that has a great or that has met Bill Hader is a great story. You're like, oh, that sounds and with a few cocktails, awesome. he will bust out the impressions. Yes. Yeah. So you'll get, I'll get him to do Vincent Price, which is, and you, you, you get some Stefan. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd go, yeah. So it's Mina Kimes, Sarah Spain, Conan O'Brien, Neil deGrasse Tyson. And the last spot is that wild card spot where I'm throwing another comic in there. It's either going to be Marty Short, Bill Hader, uh, or or John Stewart, one of those. Oh, that's good. John Stewart's good because yeah. he's also the intellectual. But comedian. he would he would jive with Conan too. They would have some nice riffs yeah. together. Man, I saw him live. Uh, John Stewart. Uh, yeah, he did a show with Mulaney, uh, here in Pasadena, and uh, I I got tickets to the show. I happily got tickets to that show. Watched and got so angry because of how fucking good they yeah are. they're so good i know well <laughs> you're good too brad williams thank you and and you can see me be good i'm gonna i'm gonna lay it all out for all you right. you're gonna see the new specials called starfish you can get it on veeps which yeah. you just download the app and then you watch yeah. it right on there it's a it's a pay service for for a la carte but you get it for life yeah uh and on it, winter solstice yeah december 21st and and just know that this is like one of those they always say bet 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 on yourself. Yeah. I financed this special. Oh, myself. you did? Yep. And then sold it to them afterwards. Yeah. Okay. And then so I financed it myself. I gambled on myself. Uh other people Did you make your money back? Uh yes. So Good. I'm so I'm at least even right yeah. now. Other people offered me an amount of money where I'm like, okay, that's good, but I want to bet on myself, so I'm I'm taking a gamble here. Yeah, and uh, I hope it works out, and I'll only you know make a lot of money. I essentially broke even when Veeps got it. Yeah, so now I'm trying to make some money. So get the special. You support me, and you support an Asian dwarf baby. Uh, I mean four, but yeah, Asian dwarf baby. <laughs> She'll always be a baby to me. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm dwarf. Wife's Asian. Asian dwarf baby. Okay, that that that'll get you into heaven. Tour dates, uh, December 28th in Fresno, December 29th and 30th, San Francisco at Cobbs. Yep. January 6th, Santa Barbara. Yeah, that's where I filmed my first special fun size. I'm coming back to the Libero Theater. We sold out the first show. We added a second. January 19th in Sacramento. Crest Theater. We added a second there as well. January 20th, San Diego. Balboa and then you're going Theater. on a cruise on the 26th, you, WWE. You, you you mean the Chris Jericho Rock and Wrestling Rager at Sea? That that one's already sold out. Don't care. It's going to be a blast. Bringing the wife? 
No. 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 <laughs> People are going to get thrown off the ship. There's yeah. no doubt about it's gonna that. It's going to be great. Uh, February 1st uh, through the 3rd, Tempe Improv. Yeah. The 4th in Tucson. The 9th in Bakersfield. The 10th in L.A. We yeah. talked about that, show. The 16th in Memphis, 17th in Dallas, 18th in El Paso, 24th in Vegas, March 1st in Charlotte, and March 2nd in Atlanta. All tickets at bradwilliamscomedy.com. And if you're sitting there right now going, hey, I live in Boston or Indiana or whatever the hell, you didn't mention those. They're on there. You there's gotta go to the many website. more dates. There's go there, more. and I think there's a mailing list people can get yep. on so yep. you can you can find out when he's coming to see you. Exactly. And uh, get, get get your tickets. Love to see some Fitz Dog listeners in, the, in that audience. If I'm doing the meet and greet afterward and someone comes up to me and goes like, oh, I heard young Fitz Dog, I go, all right, great. You're a comedy fan. Yes. Good. Right. You know this. Yeah. You know what this is. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I will, I, you know, I will respect the Fitz Dog fans. Like, there's certain fans that come up, like if they heard me from whatever podcast I did, I'm like, oh man, you yeah. don't know what comedy is. Yeah. Uh, right. But then, but then we'll talk about those after the show. We will. <laughs> and uh, but then if 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 they're a Fitz Dog fan, I know like okay, you know what comedy is. You get it. You respect it, and this this is going to be a great show. Listen, man, you're a great guest. I said at the beginning, you lived up to it once again. Thank you, sir. Brad Williams, ladies and gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. Ran the gamut. Lots yeah. of topics. Yeah. We, na we nailed them all. And uh, always a pleasure to be here, man. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it.